Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce a technique that combines both regular and geometric hierarchy tracking, and it can be used in a couple of different situations. First, you can use it to do the geometric hierarchy tracking on really bouncy shots where the geometric hierarchy tracking wouldn't be able to follow exactly what's happening even with a careful setting. It can also be used in nearly tripod shots. And those are the kinds of shots that you get where a cameraman is just holding a camera maybe in their hands or their shoulders and they, they point it left, they point it right and it's kind of like a tripod shot. It looks like it but really there's no nodal point that there's no nodal point that's sitting there in the camera lens so there's a bit of translation there's a bit of rotation and you can't get a 3D solve for it because there's not very much translation and you can't get a great tripod solve because it's not a, a true nodal shot so those can be kind of thorny this is a technique to help deal with those when you want to add some 3D effect to some specific part of the image and this technique can also be used when there's a bit of uh, distortion in the shot. There's something going on that you don't really understand. And again, you want to do something in a localized portion of the image. And the point is that we're basically going to be tracking the bad thing that happens. And there'll be a little, little motion. And rather than worrying about why it's there, you just, just roll with it. So... The idea is to do a rough tripod track initially, which basically stabilizes the shot. Then you do the geometric hierarchy track, which happens in world coordinates. So once the shot is stabilized a little bit, that, that can work out a lot better. When you have a very bouncy shot, you know, it's hard for the geometric hierarchy tracker to know where the object's going to show up next if it's really bouncy. So, let's just take a look at what we've got. Here's our example sort of bouncy shot. And we're going to track the can there. And for this technique, we do need to know an initial field of view and the reason for that is that if you do this tripod track on a you know, shot that's not a true tripod track, then you get a field of view value that can be wildly, wildly off. You know, maybe typically just a degree or two even. And, and again, it's, it's just because it's not really a tripod shot. So we need to supply a value here. We're going to put in around 40 degrees. We'll mark it as a known field of view. We'll head back to the summary panel. We marked that it's an, a tripod type shot. We don't need any auto place. Now I'm going to do an auto track on this. If it was a really bouncy shot going all over the place, you might actually need to do some supervised tracking first. And in that case, typically you use some supervised trackers that are quite large. Not, not necessarily just the search area, but the actual tracking area as well. Again here we'll just run the auto track. It'll go flying through and come up with a approximate tripod solve. And you'll see that there's a you know a 20 pixel error here. So it's really quite large. And one thing you don't want to do at this point is go run the cleanup trackers. It's basically it's going to take them all out. So that would be a bad idea. So you know, you can do a little manual looking around to see if there's anything that's problematic here and, and clean that up. But the, the exact details of this, this track aren't really crucial. It's just a way of getting a roughly stabilized version of the shot. And we're not actually stabilizing the shot. We're just kind of figuring out where the camera was pointing at any given point in time. So now we're ready to do the geometric hierarchy tracking. And we're going to bring up the pinning toolbar there and start creating a cylinder. We'll get this kind of roughly in the right 
orientation. I'm going to control drag the sandal just to bring it forward a little bit. Now to configure this spinning tool, we want to leave the field of view fixed because we already entered the value for that. We don't want to mess that up. And we want to have the pinning tool figure out the height. And the key point is you don't want to check both the width, you know, have it calculate width and depth because if you have it calculating those independently, it's just going to decide that you've got an oval there and you want to keep it as a circle. So we keep those two fixed and we let the, uh, the height get changed instead. So we'll do one other thing just to make this a little more visible. We'll make the wireframe not lit. And now I'm going to start doing a control drag to snap onto some vertices there. And I'm going to just do a right, right drag to zoom in there. This is just a 2D zoom into the image plane. And I'll just work my way around. So at this point we can start lining things up and I'll point out to avoid playing too much you know, chasing yourself in circles there, you want to get these vertical crosshairs to be in the right spot mainly. And once you get those in the right spot then the other things should follow. And you can, sometimes you get in trouble and you have kind of a skew between the top and the bottom, these two middle guys there. So I'm going to go and null out the errors there. Oops. Yeah, so we get something that's roughly right. We could play with it some more. But basically we have the cylinder there roughly in place. Now we'll just close that toolbar up. And now we want to create our geometric hierarchy node here. So I'm going to select the surface lasso tool, hold down shift and click our little mesh there. You rotate around, you'll see that the uh, node is right there in the cylinder. It's the best place for it, for a root object. And now we can go and just tell it what we want to have be tracked, which is all six of the axes, so we can just fly around in the environment completely. And we're now we're ready, we can just have it run through and now we've completed our tracking of the geometric hierarchy object. One thing I'll point out after you've completed tracking of these objects, it's a good idea to lock them up so that they don't burn up more time subsequently when you're playing with other things and so that you don't go and inadvertently mess them up. So let's just go take a look in the quad view there. If we zoom in a bit, you know, you'll see that there's some movement there, and that's fine, and not really going to affect what what we're going to do to it generally. You know, this this trajectory. You know, obviously the thing is moving. The the object here in this case is just fixed in the environment, but you know what you're seeing is the pathway that's necessary to compensate for the motion of the camera that the cameraman is holding. And plus, if you've got distortion, any kind of distortion that's going on as well, it all just comes out as being some residual little motion here, which generally isn't going to make much difference. If it is going to make a difference, 
probably I should have a little script that goes and takes that little path and applies that back to the camera so that you know the camera is, has all that motion added to it and the object is truly still. But that game only works when there's only a single object. If we're doing this for a couple objects at once, you might have one object here, another over there. So we can do the same trick for each of them. And you know they'll each have their own little different path. We can apply their, the 3D effect to it locally there. And it all holds together, even though you know there's some little things going on that you can't really see that don't really matter. So I hope that uh, you'll find this a useful technique for your marginal shots. I'll point out on this particular shot, you can actually get a full 3D solve from it from it as it turns out. But uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.